Thank you, thank you so much to Nolifefe from DSV for those words of encouragement and I hope that you will also hear from our learners here once they're ready in terms of the learnership and internship opportunities offered through uh, DSV. Right, I would like to call upon Amanda to come join me here so that she can help me with the Change Agent Sustainability Awards winners and maybe she'll quickly tell us what are those Sustainability Awards all about and I think we will also be hearing from the winners themselves. Over to you. Thank you. So the change agent for sustainability, it's basically saying that people must make sure that they don't just leave here and not continue their projects. So we want to keep in touch with you. You're all part of the YCAP family. So we want you to tell us what you've done since YCAP. So either you've used the YCAP toolkit to do another project, it doesn't even have to be a school project, it can be anything, or you've actually gone and taken that project that you had to the next level and you've sustained it. So we have different categories for that, but this year we've actually got only two, two categories, but we've got a winner and then we've got another category with a winner and two runners up because they were all so good. Um, unfortunately, the one winner couldn't be here today because he's at a science competition. So he's too busy to be here. <laughs> and then the other three are here and they're going to come and present what they've done. We've got PowerPoint, I hope it's working now. Um, and they're going to show us what um, their projects have been all about. So I'm just going to announce who they are and then they will come in that order. And I'll give them their prizes afterwards. So please will the individual winner, Kakiso Tumelo Baloy, come up. Kakiso. There he is. I hope he's managed to load his presentation. Is it working? Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Gahiso. My journey in YCAP began in 2014 when I was in grade 10, which was six years ago. We collected books and built a library for our high school in 2014. And uh, that library has been sustained till this very day. If you go to our high school, the buildings are still there, it's still fresh, it looks like it was built last week because we've put people in place who come to maintain and check on the progress. Um, when I joined YCAP six years ago, that was just the beginning. Uh, because I also joined the support group and went on to mentor other schools and uh, people in different provinces. I learned a lot in my journey with Empowervate, and I would like to highlight a few things I've learned in this journey. One of which is leadership. I would like to highlight leadership because different people would define leadership differently. For some, leadership is motivation. For others, leadership is inspiration. And for others, leadership is results. We all want to be successful one day, but you need to ask yourself this question. Are you a leader or are you a follower? What I mean by this is that followers are the people that are waiting for direction. These are the people whom are told where to go. Leaders, on the other hand, are focused on what is being said and not, uh, uh, sorry. Leaders, on the other hand, are not focused on what is being said, but they are focused on what is being done. These are the people who are standing in the front of the line and giving direction to the followers. The people who use fear as an excuse as to why they cannot reach their full potential simply because they are afraid of failure. But as a leader, you need to understand that failure is part of the process of being success successful. You need failure in order to overcome your downfalls, which in return will elevate your past limitations, limitations you thought you could never surpass. A leader needs to be determined. A leader needs to be motivated and never use fear as an excuse. Great leaders stare fear in the face and say, you are yesterday's problems. If you want more out of life, you need to go out and get it. 
because nothing comes to a sleeper but nightmares. Most leaders became, became great leaders because they were intelligent followers. But great leaders don't create great followers. They create great leaders. To be a great leader, you need to be prepared to make sacrifices. You need to be prepared to lose people in the process. You need to choose your friends wisely because these are the people who, who influence you. Remember, everything starts in the mind. Your thoughts create your emotions and feelings, which then translates to your behavior, and that causes your actions, which brings out your results. And I'd like to highlight this as well. If you are the smartest person amongst the group or the friends that you hang around with, then you need a new group of people to hang around. Um, I'm really humbled to stand here today because not only when, when I joined YCAP, I was, only, I was just in grade 10, but what I have learned in that period is something that I'm still using to this very day. When, when you actually get into the real world, which is after matric, it's either you go to varsity or you start working, you actually realize how different life is from high school. And the skills that you learn here, you can actually use to, 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 um, to, to, to do things outside of school. And that's not something you can learn in school. So I hope that all of you here have learned something. And thank you. I think we'll do all the presentations and then the awards. Or should we do the awards now? Do you want your award first? Uh, yeah, he wants his award. Let's do his award first. <laughs> Simon, will you hand over the award? Well done. Give a round of applause to our change agents. Oh, we need Boston. Boston? Come, Boston. We've got, um, let me tell you what the prize is. Okay, so basically what, what he's won, firstly it's a book by Mark Wainer. Does anyone know who Mark Wainer is? Okay, it's very nice. Mark Wainer is a very rich guy. He's very rich. He started a company many years ago in property. It's called Redefine, Redefine Properties. And now this book is called Making My Mark, which is clever because his name is Mark. And it's all about how he got to where he got. You know, how did he become so successful? And he donated these books to us because he wants everyone here to be successful. So that's why some of the prizes are his book. Um, the other prize I'd like Boston to present. Will you tell me about the prize? Um, we offer a, a Boston advisory. So you can just study whatever you want to study. It could be a degree or a diploma or a higher certificate. We'll do another one. So we want to thank Boston for providing education and making sure that um, you know, those who can't afford it are having the opportunity. And I hope you're going to enjoy studying and you're going to keep us updated. We want to know what you do and we want to know how well you do. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think we take this. Oh, I must call the next person now. I can't go back to my seat. I'm not done yet. So now we're going on to the team leader. So the individual award was an individual who is just out of school. It's not a school learner. And that was that award, okay? And that was a support team member as well. Kachiso has been involved in the support team since he left YCAP because he did it many years ago. Um, so now we're going on to the team leader award. So this is a learner, someone who was um, in their team very recently. I was doing YCAP. And now they entered to say what has happened since then, since we last saw them. So it's a status update. Um, there are three winners. So I'm going to start with the third one. Um, Lusanda Nkobo from KwaZulu Natal. Well done. And Lusanda, your presentation, is that right? Yeah, there's your presentation. Oh, where's the clicker? There we go. Okay. 
to the hearts at large, please receive my warm greetings. I'm Rusan Ngawa doing grade seven at Isibo Sabasha Primary School, Umzingati District from Wazulu Natal Province, representing my team as a team leader. I'm here to present the Change Agent Award for Sustainability, of which I entered and became the second runner up. And these are my team members. Topics. Under our main topic, orphans and vulnerable children, we have identified four subtopics. Hunger and malnutrition leading to poor academic performance. Bullying due to lack of parental guidance. Late coming and shortage of school uniform. Breakfast feeding continues for sustainability. After we got position two at district level, we continued with breakfast feeding to orphans and vulnerable children as they were identified in the first project. During exams, Mrs. Sitole, our cleaner, helped us with preparations of the breakfast feeding because we involve all the stakeholders. Since we have opened for 10-3, we are continuing with breakfast feeding. Fundraising strategies. To sustain our project, fundraising activities once a month are in progress for the whole year. Our fundraising activities aim at breakfast feeding, transport fees, and to support child-headed family, as identified in the first project. And these are the fundraising evidence. Evidence for breakfast feeding. Breakfast feeding continues. Evidence for child-headed family. Sustainability on poor academic performance due to late coming. As for late coming, the number of learners who used to be late in our school are now punctual because of breakfast feeding. They don't want to miss it. YCAP did awareness on punctuality at school level. We communicated with parents and community to assist the learners to be punctual. As for poor academic performance, we have started a program with school-based support team. Mrs. Tabekulu, the leader, is assisting those learners with remedial activities. Among Amongst the learners that we have identified, one of them is in process to be transferred to a special school after the complete assessment of his progression. There is an improvement to some of the learners even though they didn't achieve. Addressing parents on late coming. We address the parents on the importance of punctuality at school. Remedial activities to improve academic performance. Remedial activities continue. Our future plans. We plan to build or organize a house for one of the two families that we have visited. To the other family, we are planning to buy a bed and a cupboard using our fundraising funds. We, co we plan to continue with a garden so that we'll continue giving fresh vegetables to all identified kids. We've, we are still going to identify other learners for the next two years. We are in the process of researching on how our school can be transformed into a full service school. Revisit families. During our first visit, we noticed that these two families need our help because the first family, all nine members of the family are living and sharing one room. So we felt that we need to involve all the stakeholders that might help the family. We wrote letters to the municipality, councillor, and social workers, nurse, to request their intervention to help these families. Our aim to involve the above stakeholders is to request their intervention in terms of providing or building a house. Let us we wrote to the stakeholders. One room which is shared by all nine members of the family. Skills are acquired during this project. Teamwork, leadership, sharing, caring, giving, and offering. Values are acquired during this project. Sympathy, love, respect, observe, differentiate, categorize, and prioritize. Personal learnings and experiences. Appreciation, conflict resolution, understanding, planning, working under pressure, working and going extra mile, fulfillment and achievement, achieving goals in time, monitoring, controlling and reviewing. Testimonials from people who benefited from our project, parents from the family where nine members live together in one room. Relatives from the childhood family came to our school and thanked us for what we did. Evidence serves as a testimonial. Learners being served breakfast. Received from the food groceries. Food groceries. Photos taken during food groceries delivering. We worked with the Northern Guazul Natal newspaper curator to cascade information and to find sponsors, appealing the community to lend a hand. Impact solution, nourished, well-fed, and happy learners, being punctual in their proper school uniform, improved academic performance in a free bullying school. Thank you.
Thank you so much for that lovely presentation. Now we'd also like to call Boston back again. <laughs> I know you're very young, but you can still study. Hey? You can still do something outside of school, or you can give it to someone else if you don't want to. <laughs> okay, Boston. Well done. Give her a round of applause. Thank you. Um, then the next winner, well, the second place, is Archie Bock from Northern Cape, who's not here. So I'd like to ask the provincial official, Mr. Rolsa, to come and accept the award on his behalf, and you can take it back after he's finished his science fair. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. Archie Bock from Northern Cape. <laughs> Boston, we need you back again. <laughs> you should stay here, rather. <laughs> Accepts it on his behalf. You must. Okay, great. Now the winner for the team leader category. Well done to Luyolo Maxim from Eastern Cape. Uh, he's still got it on the, on the flash drive. So I think in Kosanati, you must do something entertaining while we wait for them to load that PowerPoint. All right, cool. Um, we know and remember that we have a special guest coming. If I may just ask, do you know who that is? Miss SA 2010, am I correct? All right, we'll check if she is, oh, even know her by name. Awesome. You know, we're so used of, uh, of calling people by their titles. This is the school principal, this is Miss South Africa, this is the bus driver, this is Dr. So-and-so. So I'm glad to know that you know her by name, which is very important, because, I mean, names carry our identity. So I'll check if she's here, and then maybe we might, uh, you know, pick up a couple of nuggets or two from her in terms of what has she been up to ever since she won that uh, prestigious title. So I think with that, it also motivates us in terms of you know, aiming higher in life because uh, beauty pageants are also playing a very significant role when it comes to nation building. So it's also good to know that our sustainable award winners are here and showing us what they've been busy with. So my good sir, are you ready? Yes. The mic is yours. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank YCAP for this award. It really means a lot to our school and of course to me. YCAP has been our tradition since 2015, and since then we've done extremely well in it. We chose the 2018 project for our sustainability project because it was about nutrition and the health of learners. We made our first move. We made our first move and held a meeting with Mrs. Vandala, DOE coordinator for nutrition, who was part of the 2018 project and was delighted to be part of the, our sustainability project. She gave us a few key ideas that we should look at. The first one, she wanted us to give questionnaires to learners so that we can hear their views and see what kind of food they sell, at the, um, they buy at the vendors, and how much money they spend. And the second one, she wanted us to, uh, she wanted the school to have exercise sessions. And also the third one, she wanted us, um, our school to call DOH, um, Department of Health, to call, um, to come and weigh children and also take their blood pressure. This, ladies and gentlemen, you see here um, are children buying from the vendors. This is the kind of food um, they sell from the, um, from the vendors. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is unhealthy. We then had a meeting with the vendors um, 
and that afternoon it actually went the meeting went well we um they agreed that they'll change the food and put nutritious food but they had a concern they wanted to hear from the learners what kind of food they wanted to um to um to sell um we called uh, nmu gave us um their their final year student um known as Renee Nell to come and do PMI. PMI is body mass index. She, she came and did some weighing and also um, took the height of the learners. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, these were the assessment results. When plotting PMI, it was found that 75.9% were normal weight, 2.3% were underweight, 21.8% were overweight, of which 9.8% were obese. Plotting I, um, height for age, 51.9% of learners were normal height, 9.8% were stunted, of which 1.5% were severely stunted. Those were underweight, those who were underweight were either seen at school or referred to the clinic by the dietetics intern. Um, this, was, this was one of the learners who were underweight. Um, Renee Neal gave, her, gave him some, some supplements. Renee Neal also, um, the vendors were stubborn. So Renee Neal um, decided to have a meeting with them and show them what, um, how nutrition is important for our learners, how health is important for our learners. So, they also said that they wanted to, uh, they wanted a meeting with, um, with the learners to see what kind of food they want, um, they want them to sell. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we, Pastor David came with, um, we decided to, that we will plant parsley. So, Mr. Pastor David um, came with the parsley and um, the manure. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is an, is an expert in organic farming. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen he helped us um, with, the, with, the with the planting of parsley, potatoes, and peach root. This, ladies and gentlemen, is our, our, our sustainability team. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we were working, uh, we were planting parsley. So this is spinach when we first planted it, and three months later, this was the spinach. And also beetroot has grown, and also parsley. Parsley. <laughs> beetroot. Um, oh yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, in this project, I've learned that nutrition and health is very important, especially to us young people. Because if you're not healthy, then our minds, we won't think very well, and we won't be able to to do to, to well at school, ladies and gentlemen. And this is just a glimpse of our project, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you. <laughs>